Thank you for joining me once again on Crunch Econometrics. Today we shall be looking at VAR models in Stata. So how do you go about explaining what a vector autoregression model is all about? The word autoregressive indicates the presence of the locked values of the dependent variable on the right hand side of the equation. And the word vector also shows that the system contains a vector of two or more variables. A VAR model is constructed only if the variables are integrated of order one. That is, the series are all stationary after first difference. If the variables are co-integrated, then go ahead to construct both the short run, which is the VAR model, and the long run, which is a VKM model. But if there is no co-integration, it is the short run model, which is the VAR model, that is estimated. We know that all the variables in the VAR system are endogenous. There are no exogenous variables in the system. And the stochastic error terms in a VAR model are often called impulses or innovations or shocks. On the screen is an example of a three-variable VAR model, PDI, PCE, and GDP. And by the time you look at the right-hand side of each of these equations, you will notice that the dependent variable is a function of its own lag and the lagged values of other regressors in the system. So that is why it is said that a VAR model does not contain any exogenous variables. All the variables here are all endogenous. So looking at the PDI equation, this is PDI, a function of its lag, a function of the lag of PCE, and a function of the lag of GDP. Same thing goes for PCE and the GDP equations. So once again, a VAR model does not contain any exogenous regressors. And these are simple notes I wrote here. Like I said earlier on, the dependent variable is just a function of its own lag values and the lag values of other variables on the model. Another thing to know in a VAR model is that all the variables have equal lags. You can see here K lags across all the variables. So the same number of lags is used to estimate the model, not individual uh, lags for each of the variables, as it is often obtained in an uh, ARDL model. For VAR model, all the variables take the same lags. So it is the optimal lag of the model that is often determined, not the optimal lags for the variables. Then lastly, I wrote here that VAR must be specified in levels. If you specify your VAR in differences, you have simply misspecified that model. So you can see here, all the VAR here are in levels. They are not specified in false differences. And again, a VAR model is estimated by the ordinary least squares. You can always decide on the maximum lag length, even though it's an empirical issue. It depends on the structure of your data. If you use too many lags, you are going to lose degrees of freedom those coefficients may be statistically not significant and you may suffer multicollinearity. If you use too few lags, your model may suffer from specification errors. So the only way out is to choose optimal lags using any of these information criteria. And when you want to interpret the coefficients in the VAR model, these are short-run coefficients and you are simply going to give them the ceteris paribus effects. Because like I said earlier on, these are just OLS estimates. So what are your reasons for estimating a VAR model? It could be because there is no co-integration among the variables in the system, or you want to establish a causal relationship among the variables, or perhaps you want to simulate shocks to the system and trace out the effects of shocks on the endogenous variables. Or maybe you want to do some forecasting by decomposing shocks to the VAR system. Now, in Stata, how do we go about estimating VAR? Number one, make sure you correctly specify the model. I've given you an example in my previous slides. Step two, time set the Stata application using this syntax. If you don't do that, Stata will not perform your time series analysis. Step three, go ahead to perform stationarity test. Make sure that the series are all integrated over the one and not of order two. You can use any of these uh, stationarity test syntax, Dickey Fuller, Phyllis Peron, DFGLS, whichever one you like, you can go ahead to use it.
Now go ahead to determine the optimal lag length for the model using the syntax VASOC. Then estimate the VAR model itself using the syntax VAR. After that, perform some diagnosis checks using any of this. This is for um, autocorrelation, this is for normality, and this is for stability. So now let's proceed to Stata to take out some example. So here my data editor, I have the three variables I'll be using for this tutorial. I have the PDI, I have the PCE, I have the GDP in their log forms, and I've also created their false difference uh, specifications here. In my usual practice, my log file is on to track all the estimations I'm going to do. And I have my do file where all the codes are written out. So step one is done. I've shown you my model specification. Here is it again. This is the model I'm going to estimate. It's a three variable var model. So my model is correctly specified. My target variable is always listed first in each equation. So for the PDI equation, PDI is a target variable. So make sure you know the order by which your variables will be arranged in the VAR model. Step two, time set the application. I have a quarterly data, so I'm going to execute this command for Stata, T set quarterly. I've highlighted it and I run it. So this is the outcome from Stata, T set quarterly. I'm set now to estimate the VAR. Step three, perform stationarity test. This is the command I'm going to use. I'm only going to use the Kifula test for this tutorial just to keep it simple. And in the Dikifula test, you need to indicate some lags. If you don't use a lag, you're only estimating the uh, Dikifula. But by putting the lag, you are estimating the augmented Dikifula. So know the differences. So I've listed all the three variables here. I'm going to run them and I'll explain the results. I'm indicating four lags each just to run the stationarity test. So I have the results here. This is Dfula. This is the syntax I executed. And this is the outcome. You can see here, augmented Dfula test for unit rule. So for PDI, the test statistics here is negative 1.336. And what will be the decision criteria? In this case now, we are going to consider absolute value. And by absolute value, we don't reckon with the negative signs. So if the absolute value is lower than the 5% critical value, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of a unit root. So for PDI, it shows that the series is non-stationary, given the decision criteria. Now let's look at the PCE results. It's the same decision we are going to take. The absolute value here is lower than the 5% critical value. So we can say here that the PCE series is also non-stationary. And same result is given for GDP. So make sure you know how to interpret your Dikif augmented Dikifula results. So having seen that the series are non-stationary, what do we do? We now test using their first difference. So I have the syntax written out here. I'm going to highlight. You can see it here, D dots. So this is the first difference of each of the variables. I execute. And now we can see the outcome of the augmented Dikifula test using the first difference of the variables. So remember our decision criteria, you reject the null hypothesis of a unit root if the absolute value of the test statistics is higher than the 5% critical value. And that is what we have here. We are rejecting the null hypothesis of a unit root because right now, using the first difference of PDI, it is now a stationary series at first difference. Same outcome is given for PCE. You can see here, the absolute value is higher than that of the critical value at 5% level. And same outcome for the GDP, higher than the 5% critical value. So using the first difference of these variables, we now have stationary series. So step three is done. Step four, determine the optimal lag for the model. I have written out the command I'm highlighting. You can see it here using the VASOC command. I'm indicating maximum of eight lags. I can even use up to 12 because I have a quarterly data. So I execute this. So here on the screen is the outcome of the VASOC command. And um, once a lag number is asterisked, it shows you that um, that is the optimal lag order to use given the indicated information criterion. 
In this case, I'll be using the AIC information criterion. In fact, you can use any information criterion. And why did I decide on using AIC? Number one is asterisk. Another rule of thumb is that the lower the value, the better the model. And because negative 21 is lower than negative 20, you can see it's asterisk here. So I'll be sticking with lab 2 and using AIC. So step 5, estimate the unrestricted VAR model. I have the code written out here. Remember I said it before, in a VAR model, all the variables take the same number of lags. So I've indicated it here, lag 2. I execute this command, and here we have our results for the VAR model. You can see here, that's the command executed, and you can see vector autoregression. The waste data output shows, it will show you the ASCOM variable and the regressors. So this is the lagged values of the dependent variable, and these are the lagged values of other regressors. So each section of the table will first of all indicate the variable of interest, and its respective regressor. So that is how you read the data table. So how do you go about interpreting the results of a VAR model? Sometimes it's always intuitive to interpret the large regressors together on the dependent variable. But you can also individually interpret these results on the dependent variable, okay? For instance, PCE. I can say that the first lag of PCE has a positive impact on PDI at a significant level of 1% on average Ceteris Paribus, while the second lag of PCE has a negative effect on PDI at a significant level of 10% on average Ceteris Paribus. For GDP, I can interpret it as GDP has a negative impact on PDI on average Ceteris Paribus at the 5% level. Coming to the PCE equation here, I can interpret this as PDI does not have any significant impact on PCE from the outcome of the P values. While GDP, only the first lag has a negative impact on PCE at the 5% level. For the GDP equation, my interpretation will go this way. The first lag of PDI does not have any significant impact on GDP while the second lag of PDI has a negative impact on GDP at the 1% level on average Ceteris Paribus. For the PCE coefficient, my interpretation would be that the first lag of PCE has a positive impact on GDP at the 1% level, while the second lag of PCE does not have any significant effect on GDP. But like I said, it's always more intuitive to look at the joint significance or joint effect of each of the regressors on the dependent variable. I will take that up when I'm talking about grandeur causality or when I'm referring to impulse response functions or variance or decomposition. So that will be in subsequent tutorials. I will also cover diagnostics in my very next lecture. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. Stay with me. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to perform some diagnostics after estimating a VAR model.